Today we're gonna make my absolute favorite chicken pot pie recipe and we're going to make it into a grab and go meal that is a comfort food lunch on the go. You're gonna be absolutely amazed at how easy it is and how delicious it is and how long it can sit on your shelf. Today we're making a double batch of chicken pot pie. This would be enough to make about four shallow pies if you were just gonna eat it fresh, but we're going to be putting it up for really quick, easy grab and go meals. Let's take a look at the ingredients that we need on hand. We're gonna need about eight cups of a chopped chicken two cups of celery, two cups of chopped carrots, two cups of onions that have been chopped. You're gonna want two cups of peas. If you're buying frozen peas, make sure they've been thawed. We're gonna have two cups of either evaporated milk or you can use a half and half or a heavy cream. Four cups of a really good quality homemade chicken bone broth about a cup of flour and about two thirds cup of butter. We're gonna turn this into something amazing. I have got to tell you guys about my absolutely favorite brand new tool in the kitchen. This is a game changer and it is saving me hours a week, especially in preserving season, prepping my food for preserving. And I've now used it for about a year and I am absolutely in love with it. I thought I'd better share it with you guys. That is the Dicer kit attachment for my Breville food processor. Now, I wasn't sure that this was gonna work out really well when I first found it, but I went ahead and ordered it. It's not cheap, but oh my goodness, I am absolutely loving this. And you guys are gonna see why right now. Check out how fast it makes preparing food. That's about two cups of carrots. Make sure you always save all the little ends and things like that for making really good bone broth or stock. It is a game changer to get that great flavor with your ends and your tips. And that's about two cups of celery. I love the even dice that this makes on the vegetables. I really, really like it for onions because I can get through a whole batch of onions without starting to cry. We're gonna do two of these for about this, two cups of chopped onions. Look at how fast and easy that was. You guys, this is not a cheap tool, but if you're serious about food production and if you're really serious about preserving food, I really, really recommend this. I am just using it all the time in the kitchen. We're gonna put just a little bit of our butter into the pan to start. And let it melt completely. Go ahead and put all eight cups of chicken right on into the pan. Let's get that cooking for a minute. Once the chicken has started to cook on the outside, go ahead and add all your chopped veggies right on in. It's really important to make sure your chicken cooks all the way through at this stage because we're not gonna be cooking it again. Later we'll be reheating it when we go to have the lunch, but we need to make sure that it is thoroughly cooked at this stage before we move on. If you don't have a pan this size, you may have to use two separate skillets to cook it. This one's a really big one. Now that the chicken is cooked all the way through and the vegetables are just starting to soften, we're ready to add the rest of the butter. Now this butter is going to melt all the way so that we can go ahead and make the gravy or the sauce part. Right, as soon as your butter is entirely melted, then you're ready to go ahead and add in your flour. Just sprinkle it right on over the whole thing. And go ahead and stir it in all the way. Don't worry if it looks a little clumpy to start, it'll work itself out as it cooks. 
this is gonna look really dry and kind of unappetizing for a moment here, and that's okay. Just keep cooking and stirring uh, constantly for a few minutes. We wanna make sure we cook the flour and not just add our liquid right away. If we don't cook the flour for a minute or two, that's going to give us a kind of raw flour taste, which is not going to be any good at all. So we wanna make sure to go ahead and let it start to brown just a little bit. This is also gonna make sure that we don't end up with lumps in our final product. Just cook it until you start seeing a little bit of color change on that flour. Keep it moving. I've been stirring for about three minutes here and we're just starting to pick up a little bit of color. Sometimes with this volume, it might even take about five minutes and that's okay. Just stick with it until you start seeing that flour start to darken and turn a little bit more of a golden color rather than just that white color. Once you see that, you're ready to go ahead and add your liquid in all at once. That's the broth and then the cream. And stir that right on in. Once you get that well mixed, you can go ahead and add in your frozen peas and your salt and pepper and mix that in. Keep stirring because it's gonna start to thicken, so make sure you're scraping the bottom. If you guys want the written printable directions for this recipe, make sure you click the link below and check out the blog post that's attached. You can download the recipe, you can print it off, make it a lot easier to follow. As soon as it starts to get thick and bubbly, go ahead and turn it off. It's gonna continue thickening, thickening for a minute, but we need to let it cool before we take the next step. Now, if we were going to just have this for dinner, we'd go ahead and prepare our pie crust and put it right on in there and slide it into the oven at about 375 until the pie crust was nice and brown on the top and the filling was bubbling. But we're not making dinner tonight. We're making grab and go meals. Right now, you get two choices. You can either freeze this meal for a quick meal that you can grab and go with and then heat later, or you can freeze dry it so it can sit on your shelf for up to 20 years, just ready for you to grab it, add hot water, and uh, eat it right away. But before we jump into either freezing it or freeze drying it, let's take a look at how to make the crust. In your food processor, go ahead and add two and a half cups of flour. You can use half all-purpose flour and half whole wheat flour if you want. Then add a cup of butter that has been chopped up into small pieces. It should be really, really cold butter. Add a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of salt. Process it just until the butter is in nice, small, pea-sized chunks. Now, working quickly, add really cold water until the dough starts to look wet all the way down at the bottom. The amount of water that you'll need is gonna vary a lot depending on the specific conditions in your kitchen, so just make sure you watch the dough. Turn it out on a floured cutting board. Just give it a quick knead. At this point, it will store really nicely wrapped in plastic and placed in the freezer. You can do a bunch of them and keep them there for several months. Or you can just chill this really quickly in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes and you'll be ready to move on to the next step. Now, if we were going to have this for dinner, we just roll out this pie into normal pie shape. But because we're preparing this for a grab and go meal, we wanna get it into nice, small, little discs. So roll out your pie crust nice and thin. 
Because we're making grab and go meals, we want to serve these up in individual portions. These wide mouth pint jars work incredibly well for this, whether you're using free, the freeze dryer or the freezer. The other great thing about these jars is that we can use the rings to go ahead and shape the pie dough that's gonna go on the top. These cute little rings are gonna get pre-baked in a 375 degree oven for just a few minutes, and they're gonna be perfect to top the frozen version of this grab-and-go chicken pot pie meal. But if you're going to do the freeze-dried meal, it doesn't really matter what shape they're in because you're gonna crumble it all up and you're gonna put it right into the mix of the chicken pot pie filling. So you can cook it in whatever shape, but it does need to be pre-baked. While those pie crust bits are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up six of my wide mouth pint sized jars that are going to go into the freezer. Now, whenever we're packaging anything for the freezer, we have to make sure we give at least a generous inch of headspace on the top. Leave a bit, a little, little bit of room in there. As soon as these are completely frozen, we're going to pop them open and put those little topper pie crusts right on there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my two piece canning lids, close them down and then get these jars into the freezer to make sure they freeze completely solidly. With the remaining filling, I'm going to go ahead and fill up a tray for the freeze dryer. Prepping this for the freeze dryer is super easy. You really just put it right on the tray. What's the advantage of using a freezer versus a freeze dryer? Well, the freezer has the great advantage that you probably already own one. Most of us have freezers on hand. They're easy to use. The downside to using the freezer is that obviously you have to defrost it before you go to cook it. You also don't have as many easy options when it comes to recooking it. A lot of times with a grab and go meal, you wanna be able to reheat it with something as simple as boiling water. But when you freeze something, you're really going to have to stick it in an oven in order to make it taste really good. That's really something that I don't like about using the, the freezer in that way. The other downside of that is that you end up using your freezer space, which in our house, is very, very precious and reserved for things like meat. Now the freeze dryer on the other hand is amazing because you can take your food and after you've finished with the freeze drying process, you can store it on the shelf for up to 20 years. That just makes it so doable. It is sitting there waiting for you. When you go to reheat it, you're just gonna add water. So that's great. The downside to the freeze dryer, it's the cost. Those things are expensive. In our house, we found that it's completely worth it because we're using it constantly, and it really saves money on things like this, the convenience meals. We really like it, but both methods are very, very doable. The important thing is that you start getting backup meals on your shelf for those busy days or whenever you need to grab something and run out the door, so you're not dependent on fast food, or the junky convenience foods from the grocery store. Now we're ready to slide these into the freeze dryer. I'm gonna put six of these aside for the freezer ones. I'm actually gonna let them cool all the way and then I'm gonna put them in a freezer bag and just stick them in the freezer with the uh, freezer meals for right now. And then when they're frozen solid, I'm gonna pop them right on the top so they're right in there. I'm gonna take the rest of them and put them over here on the freeze dryer tray for the freeze dried meals. Put our insulator in and lock it down. Press start. Then press not frozen and continue. And that's all you have to do. We'll come back and see what it looks like when it's all done. Mm -hmm. 
when the machine says it's done, go ahead and remove it from the freeze dryer. Wow, look at that. Crumble the filling by hand into large chunks. And crumble the biscuits right on top. Put the filling with the biscuits mixed into it into whatever container you're going to store them in. I like the wide mouth pint jars. Makes a great single serving. And just pack it in nice and full. With freeze-dried foods, it's really important to remove all of the moisture and most of the air away from the food. This will help it last a lot longer. The best way to do this is to go ahead and use the jar attachment for a vacuum sealer. You can also use an oxygen absorber and a desiccant. Now we have a meal that is sealed, ready to sit on your pantry shelf for up to 20 years, retaining its nutrient density and ready for you to grab and go whenever you need a quick meal. I love this. When you're ready to cook the frozen version of the chicken pot pie, just make sure you take it out and defrost it in the refrigerator overnight and then slide it into a 350 degree oven until it's heated all the way through and starting to get browned on the top. That's probably gonna take about 25 minutes. You could also heat this up in a microwave if you preferred. When you're ready to go ahead and eat your freeze-dried chicken pot pie, you just have to take it off the counter and open that up. Did you hear that suction? That means it was really well sealed. We have hot boiling water Rehydrating freeze-dried foods takes a little bit of finesse. You don't want to put too much water in because you'll end up with a chicken pot pie soup instead of a chicken pot pie. So you just want to fill it up with about half the volume of the food. You can see how much that's dropping down already. You can always add more water. Now I like to just put the lid on and just give it a little toss and let it sit for about two or three minutes as it rehydrates the food. Sometimes it takes five minutes and then you are ready to go. Oh my goodness, it smells just like fresh chicken pot pie. Look at that, you guys. Instant or nearly instant, really healthy. You know exactly what ingredients are in here. You know what into, went into it. You know if you like it or not and yet it can sit on your shelf and be ready to eat whenever you need it. And oh, it looks so incredibly good. That is homemade chicken pot pie. If you wanna know what else you can do with your freeze dryer, check out this video here on the different things you can do with eggs in preserving eggs.